everybody, I'm Paul Ripke. I'm a photographer from Hamburg, Germany, and I do a lot of pictures from different things, but I'm gonna show you three parts of my work now. The first project I want to talk about is called Man Babies. It's been a portrait series of fathers with their son and mothers with their daughters, where we switched the heads after shooting the picture and it got quite viral after CNN posted an interview about it and it's been one of those pictures. So the second project I want to talk about is a portrait series called Die Mannschaft. It's a portrait series of my national team, the German national team, pretty much the thing I always dreamed of being a young boy, taking pictures of my national team the way I wanted. Dreams coming true. So the third project I want to talk about is my picture Limone of Jun Olson, his free skier. In Italy, we took pictures of him, stitched them together out of 14 pictures and made this huge panoramic picture which is printed in four meters in my studio. Looks very, very nice. So today we're working for 10 collection by Fotolia with my dearest friend Nick. He's uh, over there. Hey, Nick. Very close friend of mine, just met him this morning and we <laughs> like to work together today and I'm gonna see what he's up to. So, Nick, show us what you got. I'm going. Thanks, Paul. Hey, I'm Nick Ainley from Oxford in the UK. I've been a digital illustrator for over 10 years now and specialize in combining 3D with Photoshop work. Now I'm gonna show you a few of my projects. This is a 3D illustration for an advertising competition for students. The main character is sitting on a throne made up of 35 different objects representing some of the most famous adverts ever made. I wonder if you recognize a few. For this illustration, I worked with a celebrity photographer from the US. Originally, she was photographed sitting on the edge of a bathtub. I extracted her from the photo and then built this image. This illustration was made for the art collective Depth Call, of which I am a member. It's about half 3D and half photo. Have a closer look at some of the details where the 3D and photo blend together. Now I'm in Hamburg to work with Paul on the 10 collection, so let's go. So the idea was to mix Hamburg backplate, kind of futuristic setup of different angles, different houses, different bridges, to mix it up with uh, water made out of nude human bodies and uh, to edit some futuristic wakeboarding, which is the sport of the futures. So yeah, I took the great photos you took out in Hamburg and the wakeboarder and all those naked bodies and naked people and I used it to build this futuristic illustration. Um, the photos from Photolia really helped out and there are a few 3D elements there integrated to give it a futuristic abstract type feel um, and I think it worked out great. The first step of this process was to meet at the harbour of Hamburg, drive around with a boat and then take some pictures for the background. I used the Phase 1 IQ 180, that's 80 mega, megapixels um, digital middle format. It's uh, the camera I always use if I need big uh, data files and it's quite easy to use if you're on the boat and you can move around. The technical part was not very challenging, it was just um, some simple pictures we put together at the end and I used, didn't use a tripod, I just shot out of the hand and shot at a short time and with the wide angle lens. We went to the studio and took a picture of my friend Freddy jumping with a wakeboard. This time we're not trying to put real light like the situation, we're not trying to copy the lightning uh, of outside to the studio, we just try to make it look as good as it can be, sort of, as I like it, because the whole picture is going to be crazily fake, so I don't care about fake lights in there, I just wanted to make it crisp and good contrast and stuff like that. Lightning-wise, I'm basically working with Prophoto, which I like because the combination of Phase 1 and Prophoto, they speak wirelessly and they can uh, uh, flash very short durance and 
the re reflectors I like the most brown color and the, the ring flash of, of brown color is, is one of my main lights. I usually use it. And then we basically use some uh, soft boxes of Profoto, some, uh, that's a beauty dish over there which we use for a fill from below and there's one more breeze uh, reflector which I normally use for people stuff but uh, today I use it as a backlight. So shooting wise it was important that he's wet, shot him a little bit water in the face and, and that the reflections get better out of the arms and um, yeah it was kind of hard to, to find his right expression in the face because you, you're once you're concentrated you face makes stupid things so, so we try to do different things not to make him smile or scream but to make him relax. I want a relaxed normal situation and, and we got that. Up, we shot him flipping around as well just with the rope without a board to have uh, different hands and different heads and different kind of body parts for Nick if he's unsatisfied with one part of the move he can change the hand or something that's just back up. The main idea was to combine different kind of themes in it. Some sport theme, some background, harbor, some Hamburg theme in it and I wanted to add naked people in there. First of all because it's fun to have naked people around. So the combination of um, sports, landscape, Hamburg and naked people. We wanted to have some naked people in there so we uh, invited some over here, female as well as male. We shot them in different positions, in horizontal position and Nick is going to try to map them on the waves and on the splashing water. So at the end the wakeboard is going to jump off a lot of human bodies which will be around 1200 at the end. So Nick is not going to have any time in the next four and a half months because he's clipping the naked people. So we decided to go with blue background because it's in front of water and it's easier to clip even if it's not clipped totally straight and, and it's going to be just massive amount of, of clipping so at the end it has to be simple in that one. So lightning wise we chose to not go directly with the light. We flashed into the wall to have no contrast at all really about it, just the, the image of, of naked people because water is very blurry. So this time as well we didn't use any stylist or any makeup artist because I don't like to have too many people talking themselves into their kind of job so we didn't have any distraction. They, the wakeboarder brought his stuff, naked people don't need anything to wear and they look good the way they look like and uh, if they don't we can use Photoshop. So at the end this is a pretty good example for my kind of work, how I work. It's my work as a photographer is way more important to organize, to kind of think of realization of projects than it is to really shoot one single picture. It's about how do you get people in here to be shot naked, how do you get a good wakeboarder in the studio that has time and is able to be part of this project and how do you manage to get a boat. That's the parts that are way more important and way harder to, to achieve than maybe making pictures. My part, like I don't like to talk too much about photography parts because the main part is organization, talking, socialization and having people you can call and arrange things. The first step in producing the illustration was to create a general layout of the whole image. Um, I took some of Paul's photos, very roughly cut them out and arranged them to give me an idea of what the final illustration should look like. We uh, talked a bit about moving things around, where things should go, and once that was sorted I could start on the actual work of producing the final picture. Although I used a lot of different techniques for extracting elements from the photos, there were three main ones I used um, for different situations. For the wakeboarder, I needed to get the best extraction possible, and for that I used the pen tool to trace around most of his body. I then created a mask from the pen tool and painted in the um, other more difficult elements, such as his hair, around the softer edges, and that allowed me to create the perfect extraction. For the photos of the naked people, I needed to use a much quicker technique. Um, there were so many people that using the pen tool and painting in masks for each one individually would have taken far too long. So the method I used was to use a combination of the magic wand and quick select tool, followed up by the refine edge tool, which is great at extracting things like hair and soft edges very, very quickly. One good tip when using the Refine Edge or Refine Mask tool is the Smart Radius setting, which allows Photoshop to um, vary the margin around the edges that it's creating. 
But sometimes you want to vary that amount on different areas of your object. You want a small amount around the smooth areas and a large amount around the sort of less defined areas such as hair. That's where the Refine Radius tool comes in. You take it like a paintbrush and paint it onto the areas you want to increase it, like the hair. That allows Photoshop to cut out the hair nicely while keeping smooth edges on the rest of your object. These affect layers similar to the way the blending modes do, but in a slightly different manner. The Blend If tool allows you to make parts of a layer transparent, depending on how light or dark they are. So if you have a very dark object sitting on a light background, you can just slide this slider and tell Photoshop to get rid of all the light areas automatically, or all the dark areas, and this is quicker than using a blending mode or manual masking is. The first thing I do when I've extracted a photo is to do a basic adjustment of levels and colors. And the tool I turn to for this is the Camera Raw filter. It was added in Photoshop CC and allows adjustment of levels, contrast, exposure, color and clarity and much more all in one go. The next step is probably the most important part of the whole illustration and what actually takes up the majority of the time. And that's compositing the various elements together, placing them in the canvas, making sure they're the correct size, angle, position, etc. And then blending them with the surrounding photos. To do this, I normally just add a layer mask to each individual element and hand paint in um, black using the brush tool to remove the areas I don't want. At this point, I'll start to want to add elements that I can't get from the photos. So I can either hand paint them in or use other photos. In this case, Photolia provides those for me. I search for what I need, download the photo, see if it works with what uh, I'm trying to do, and if so, incorporate it into the image in a similar way using masking or blending modes. The theme of the future would be represented by the various abstract shapes and futuristic looking buildings from Hamburg we used in the background. The two programs I use are 3ds Max and ZBrush. Between them, they allow me to produce almost any shape I need. Um, once I've produced it in the 3D program, I will render out multiple passes that will allow me a lot more control in Photoshop. For instance, I will normally use a diffuse pass, a specular pass, an ambient occlusion, a fall off, and a mat to allow me to extract it quickly from the render. Once this is done, I can combine it into the illustration using the same techniques as before. An important part of blending photos and 3D elements together is making sure the shadows and shading is correct. To do this, I'll make sure that elements will be casting shadows onto objects behind them or below them correctly, or adding shadows on top of them. When I add shadows on top, I, make, I use a layer and then create a clipping group with the element that I'm adding shadows to. This makes sure that if I ever need to go back and remove the shadow, all I have to do is delete the appropriate layer. While I'm working, I will continually add adjustment layers to the top of the layer stack to modify the colors and levels of the image as a whole. Adding things like gradient map layers using a soft light blending mode can help unify all your elements and make the image more of a cohesive whole. The very last step is to do adjustments that can only be done to a single layer. So once I have made sure that I have done everything I can possibly do on the layered file, I will flatten it and then do a few different processes. For instance, adding some depth of field using blur in specific areas, doing color adjustments, running light sharpen filters, and maybe adding a tiny bit of noise to give a little bit of a realistic effect. Once that's done, the image is basically finished. Although knowing how to use the tools and the various technical aspects of the program is necessary, it is not the most important part of creating such an illustration. Your creativity is what is going to make the difference. Don't be afraid to experiment. Take inspiration from wherever you can. And remember that just because you spent a lot of time doing something doesn't necessarily mean it's worth keeping. Sometimes you have to take a step backwards to go forwards. So finally, it was a pleasure having you all in here. Hope you liked a little bit of our things. We really had fun in this international production. Some English stuff, some French stuff, some German stuff, meeting up in Hamburg, creating something new. And maybe you out there like what we are doing and kind of follow how we did it. And maybe you can do it as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed our creation and having a look at how we made it. I've had a fantastic time with Paul and the film team here in Hamburg. Maybe you'll be inspired to try something a little similar yourself.